What is up guys, hope you are doing well. Today we are creating this colorful background using the CSS linear gradient function over the background property. Let's go! Okay, this is our starting point. I've created two files, the index.html and style.css files. In the index.html file, I typed some basic HTML5 boilerplate code, inserted the title, colorful background with linear gradient, linked the document to the external style sheet, the style.css file. And we can now proceed to defining the markup. All we'll need for this project is a header element with the class intro. So we are targeting the intro or hero section of our page. We may later add some content here, however, this is not the main objective of this project. And that's all with the HTML markup. Let's save and open the project in the browser. I'll be using the Live Server Visual Studio Code extension. Okay, let's move on to CSS. I usually like starting by resetting margin and padding to zero, as well as box sizing to border box for all elements. Now for the body, let's set background color to black and color to white, although we don't have any text yet. And now for the intro section, let's set background to linear gradient starting from this reddish color and ending to this yellowish color. Now this is not exactly red and this is not exactly yellow, however Let's agree to call these two colors red and yellow throughout this video. Okay, let's save and see the result. We can't see anything and that's because intro does not have any height. So let's set height to be equal to 100% of viewport's height. We don't have to define width since intro is a block level element and therefore extends to the entire width of its parent's element width, in this case the body. So let's save. Very nice. So we get a progressive transition between the two colors from red to yellow along a straight line. Doesn't have to be top to bottom, could be any direction as we'll see in a bit. However, it should be along a straight line and that's why it's called linear gradient. CSS also provides the radial gradient function where transition radiates from an origin as well as the conic gradient function where transitions rotate around a center point rather than radiating from the center. However, today we'll just discuss about the linear gradient function. Now, before proceeding, we should mention that linear gradient applies over the background image property and not over the background color. And that's because in CSS, gradient is considered to be an image and therefore the gradient functions are basically a way to generate an image natively in code. Browser support for linear gradient is solid around 97% of global usage last time I checked. So there is actually no need for fallback background. And by the way, instead of using background color and background image, we could alternatively just use the background shorthand property. And it will know what we mean if we declare one or the other. Nice, however, I will not use a fallback background. Worst case scenario, I'm okay with the body background color and let's continue. 
we could of course have any number of colors here so for example let's add green so background color starts from red transitions to yellow at 50% of the distance from the top becomes yellow and from yellow it transitions to green and at 100% it becomes green the linear gradient function allows us to control besides the direction of the transition the exact points where color changes happen so by default color transitions are evenly distributed but this doesn't have to be the case so at the default case we start at 0% from the top with red and end at 100% with yellow. Now what if we wanted for example background color to be red up until 50% from the top and from this point on to start transitioning to yellow and become yellow at 100%. In this case all we have to do is specify that we want the color from 0% to 50% to be red very nice and this part can even be omitted it is implied as a side note we don't have to use percentages here could be any unit for example pixels so now up until 50 pixels from the top color is red and from this point it starts transitioning to yellow however we'll be using percentages if we set for example a red color stop to 90% then background will be red up to this point and transition will start taking place at 90%. Now we can create a hard line between colors creating a stripe instead of gradual transition by setting adjacent color stops to the same location. So now the two colors share a color stop at the 50% mark. So let's save. Nice, and this could even be omitted. Nice. If we wanted, for example, transition to take place between 45 and 50%, we could change this to 45, and transition takes place here. So you can see how this is working. As already mentioned, we can also define the direction of the transition. Default is top to bottom. So to bottom, this is the default. So let's change direction. Let's say to right. And we now have a left to right direction. Now let's move from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. So let's say to top right. Nice. And alternatively, we could use degrees or radians or turns here. So in order to get the default top to bottom direction, we should set direction here to 180 degrees nice zero degrees would be bottom to top and moving clockwise 45 degrees would be this 90 degrees would be left to right etc notice that the 45 degrees direction is not exactly the same as the two top right we've seen earlier notice the corners these two would only coincide if the container element was square. So if this was square, okay, almost. In this case, they would coincide. Now, gradients also support transparency. So let's go, for example, from yellow to transparent. nice recall that body background color is black 
and instead of a hard line let's make a progressive transition which takes place between 33 and 35 percent nice and the fact that gradients support transparency allows us to stack multiple backgrounds from top to bottom with the first specified being on top for example after the linear gradient let's add an image from the unsplash website and let's set background size to cover nice and if for example we wanted to darken the picture instead of full transparency here we could use RGBA 0 0 0 if we say 0 here then it's full transparency if we say 1 it is not transparent so let's say 0.6 so it's a bit darker than the original nice and although we already have the necessary tools to create the final result let's go through a few more examples just in order to stimulate your creativity since there are literally countless patterns you can create using the linear gradient function so we've already been through that but this time let's make the transition at 25 percent and then again at 75 nice now let's add one more stripe by adding a transition at 50 percent okay but instead of repeating this part we could alternatively use the repeating linear gradient fu function which repeats the color stops infinitely so as to cover the entire container and let's not forget to add the initial condition so in our case the pattern will be repeated twice So let's save. Indeed, we replicated the pattern using the repeating linear gradient this time. And in order, for example, to increase the number of stripes, all we need to do is reduce the percentage for the color stops. So let's make it 5%. And let's save. Very nice. This would probably be suitable for a candy shop website or something. Okay, and that's all basically. Now let's quickly produce the final result. We've already been through that, so I will just paste it, just changing the colors. So let's save. nice but instead of repeating these colors we could alternatively rewrite it this way so from 0 to 25 percent we have this yellow color from 25 to 50 percent this gray from 50 to 75 percent red and from 75 until the end until 100 percent this light blue so let's save indeed we get the same result now I would prefer the middle stripes to be a bit thicker so let's make them 30 percent and these to 20 percent
OK, and if, for example, we wanted to reverse the direction, then instead of 45 degrees, we would use 225 degrees. Nice. However, let's keep it 45. And here we are. This is the background for our intro section. And let's quickly add some sample content. OK, just adding the intro body div containing an H1 heading and a paragraph element. Now let's import the Montserrat font family and set it as the font family for the body. Now let's use Flexbox over the intro section in order to center its content horizontally and vertically. And we also set text align to center and letter spacing to 0.1 rem. So let's save. OK, we are almost there. Just some basic CSS styling remains, such as increasing font size and adding a border around the intro body. I will just paste this part. I will include a link in the description to this project. And some responsiveness for smaller screens. So for screens up to 700 pixels width, then these styling rules apply. So let's save and see the result. Okay guys, that's all. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. For any questions, suggestions or just to say hi, please use the comment section below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you want more. Till next time, keep coding, keep improving and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye.